In this video, I will show you how to create an admin panel for a project using Codster. Codster is a free open source tool that lets you generate an admin panel in just minutes, and all you need to do is to connect it to a database. The self-hosted admin panel will allow users to view and manage data in database tables. Once it's ready, you can deploy it to the cloud or your own servers. Codster is built with Remix, a full-stack framework that runs on Node.js, so before we start, make sure you have Node.js installed. If not, you can download the latest version from the official website. In order to get started, we need to go to the documentation, and inside the docs, we see that in order to create a new project, we need to run the following command. Let's copy it. And let's open the terminal and paste this command here. Click Enter. And the first question is, uh, what is the name of my project? I'm going to leave the default name, my app. Next, I'm going to choose JavaScript and NPM. As we can see, our project was created. It was created inside the My App folder. And in order to run it, we need to run npm run dev. Uh, but instead of running it here, I will open this folder inside VS Code. Let's open our folder. Next, we need to open the integrated terminal right here. And I'm going to run the npm run dev we had there. And as we can see, our app is running. Let's open it in our browser. And the first thing we see is our notification screen, which suggests us to log in or create a new account. I'm going to create a new account. There we need to initialize our app. I'm going to leave the default name, which is admin panel, and let's click create. And the first page we see is a getting started page that suggests us to connect our database. I'm going to connect my local Postgres database. Let's choose Postgres here. And let's provide our credentials. Now let's click Connect. Right now it is installing the packages. And as we can see, our database was successfully connected and we can create the first page. So the first page I'm going to add will be for the users table. I want to be able to view and manage data inside the users table. So let's give this page a title. It will be users. And uh, there we need to choose uh, table as a page content. And let's select the users table here. Let's click add. And uh, as you can see, our users page is successfully generated. Uh, right now it displays all the data from the users table. Uh, it has pagination and ability to search data. You can add uh, new records using a convenient form, uh, or you can edit the existing data, uh, and you can also delete records. Uh, let's check out the source code of this page. And there we need to find a roles folder. This folder basically contains all the pages our app has. Right now it has on the users.jsx file, let's open it. There we can see that this file basically consists of two parts. In the first part, we define the table controller. Uh, basically, we define the features that this table has. And uh, there inside configuration object, we specify a users table and a primary key column. We also define page size, searchable, sortable columns. We also turn on operations like insert, update, delete. Uh, there is also a linked property. We will get back to this later. Uh, there is, uh, in the second part, there is a table page component in which we specify which columns we will display in the table. Uh, and there is a configuration for the form where we define uh, what fields it will have. And uh, let's get back to our page. And uh, our user's page is uh, ready to use. But as you can see, it's not perfect. For example, it doesn't have filters. What if, for example, we want to filter all these records by, by ID? Well, we can easily add this. Inside uh, the source code, there is a property select. And let's add filterable columns here. And let's specify, for example, ID column. Let's get back. And as we can see right now, it uh, has a filters button at the top. Let's open it. There we can add filter for our ID column. And let's enter some random value and click apply. 
and as we can see it works. Uh, now the second thing I don't like about this table is uh, the order in which these columns are displayed. For example, I think that first and last name should be at the beginning, meanwhile the created add column should be at the end, and I don't think we need updated add column, I think we can remove it. Well, let's get back to our search code, and uh, there we have a columns property, inside which let's put a first and last name at the beginning. Let's put uh, the created add column somewhere in the end. Uh, and let's remove updated add column. Now let's see how it works. And it's much better. The only thing I don't like about this is that uh, the column phone number is too narrow. Let's set up width for this column manually. For example, 200 pixels. And uh, as we can see, it looks much better right now. And the last thing I would add, I would add a full name column here that would show both first and last name instead of showing them separately in a separate columns like this. Uh, let's open the source code again. Uh, and here let's add the full name column. Let's specify the render function that will uh, return the first and last name separated by space. And let's remove these columns, we don't need them anymore. And the last thing, let's set up the width for this column as well, uh, 200 pixels again. And now our page looks significantly better. And just like that, you can customize the generated pages. You can adjust table behavior, including sorting, searching, filtering, pagination, validation, and more. And on the client side, you can control how the table looks and how columns are rendered. The same applies to the form model. You can configure fields or even create the custom ones. You can find more details in our documentation. The link is below the video. And let's now create uh, the second page for orders. Let's enter the title. Uh, here we choose uh, table and select orders table. Let's click add. And our page was generated. But uh, let's pay close attention to our columns. For example, uh, for the column user ID, uh, instead of just showing the ID, it displays the full name of the user. The same goes for the restaurant ID and courier ID columns. And there is also column order items, which shows uh, how many items each order uh, has. And let's open the form for adding a new record. Let's look at user ID field. It has a select instead of input. And uh, it allows us to choose a user from the users table instead of manually typing ID. But how does all of this work? Well, let's see the source code. And uh, there we need to open the orders.jsx file. And as you can see, there is the linked uh, property here, which uh, defines what relations uh, this table has. For example, there is a relation linked users by user ID. It's a one-to-one -one relation uh, inside which we specify a foreign key column, target table. Uh, we also define what columns we will show and what columns are searchable. Uh, the same goes for the restaurant ID, for the courier ID, and there is also a relation linked order items. It's a one-to-many relation in which we specify the target table and uh, foreign key column and it allows us to see what items each order has in our table. But the best part about this is that you don't have to specify all these uh, relations manually. Coster will automatically add them during the generation process. So it works like this. Uh, Coster basically goes to the uh, selected table, it analyzes all the columns and all the possible relations this table could have, and uh, then it add them here inside the linked property. So there you will have all possible one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many -many relations. And of course you can adjust these relations uh, however you want. Uh, you can add new relations, edit existing ones or delete them. And that's basically it. In just a few minutes you can generate pages to view and manage data for each table in your database. Or you can create custom pages with your own custom content. Cluster gives you full flexibility. Once your admin panel is ready with all the functionality you need, the next step is deploying it to production. Since your app is essentially a Node.js server, you have many deployment options available. 
I recommend to check our tutorial on how to deploy Codster easily. You can find the link below the video. And that's it. Now you know how to build a secure, free, self-hosted admin panel with Codster. For more information, check out our documentation. If you have any questions, join our community on Discord. We are happy to help. All the links are below the video. Thanks for watching.